Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Cronia region, my Fakemon region based on Scotland. I realise that despite commissioning a bunch of item art, I have not really explained them in much depth. So that's what this video is. Starting off, I felt like adding new evolution stones very early on into this project, using them mainly for the new variants I made for Vaporeon and Flareon. Although, I saw wider utility for them. The first is the Aura Stone, which is used for fighting types, since the aforementioned Coronian Flareon requires it. But so does my fighting type variant of Roselle, to evolve into Roserade, and I felt it made sense for my Pika clone, Nezu Miruto, to evolve via a stone, like Pikachu does with Raichu. And since Nezu Ken is a fighting type, why not a fighting type stone? I commissioned Formiga Fakemon for this. I chose Aura as an element to represent fighting, since Aura has commonly been used to depict the essence of fighting type, mainly so they could make special fighting type moves like Aura Sphere. Speaking of, the Aura Stone is modelled after how Aura Sphere is usually depicted when Lucario is using it. From now on, all items, unless stated otherwise, were done by Pokemachi. The Feather Stone, meanwhile, is essentially the Leaf Stone but with a feather, since most flying types are birds. I will admit, none of the flying type Pokemon that need it are birds but shh. I just felt like the mon that required it, Eevee into Cronian Vaporeon and Cronian Cryogonal into Cryfogonal, were right for this evolution method. Speaking of Cryfogonal, you may have noticed that it has two forms. You can switch between them in the same way you can swap Rotom's forms using the Rotom catalog. That is why the Imbalancer is modelled after the Rotom catalog, uh, loosely. I decided to make it resemble an iPad or Kindle due to being more technologically advanced than a book. It changes the balance of water molecules in clouds i.e. how much they clump together. The more water droplets clump together, the darker the clouds get, so it swaps both the rain and thunder forms of Cryfogonal. Back onto the evolution items. All of the remaining ones in this video are modelled after the Pokemon which you get as a result of using this item. I introduced two new items that help Eevee evolve both of which require it to be held by Eevee during another event before evolving. The first of which is the Pride Pebble, which helps evolve Eevee into Prideon. In case you're not familiar, I was thinking of making a normal Eevee Lucian have multiple colours, so then I thought of the LGBT plus community and Pride. Naturally, whatever item was used, if any, had to be colourful. Funnily enough, my main inspiration was the Oval Stone, since it's a rock that isn't your traditional evolution stone. I also liked the alliteration of the name Pride Pebble, and thought it sounded cute. And plus, it isn't an evolution stone, so I don't think it should have been called something stone. Something I realised later is that it's very throwable, kinda like the first brick at Stonewall? That may be a stretch. Most, but not all, evolution items have a secondary purpose, such as the King's Rock or Metal Coat. The Pride Pebble boosts the power of all special moves, just by a little bit. I was thinking about a 20% increase. However, if this move is normal type, this would be a bigger increase, perhaps 50%. Don't take these numbers as gospel. I'm not a game designer, so I don't know if these are balanced. The other item is the Draken Helmet, which, when held by Eevee, turns it into a Draconion after a trade. And yes, a trade. I felt like it was a fairly archaic and difficult method, which works for a dragon type. There would be an NPC in the mid to late game who is happy to touch trade with you, so trade evolutions are less of a hassle. It comes from a Greek name meaning dragon, which to me sounded awesome, and dragon helmets are a common fantasy trope. You'd think the item would do something to boost the power of dragon types, but I actually decided to make it more defensive, since it's a helmet, protecting the wearer by reducing damage received from dragon's most prominent weakness, fairy. Fairy is also the most powerful type, so this this in a way kind of combats that. When I showed this item on my Instagram, people were confused why it protected against fairy type moves. I hope this has cleared stuff up. The next item is easy enough. The Malt Barrel, based on Whiskey Barrels. This can be used, much like an Evolution Stone, on Cronian Sinistee to evolve it into Cronian Poltergeist. This is because the regular forms require a teapot. In fact, it did have a gimmick of there being two different kinds for the authentic and phony forms. I decided, at least for the purposes of presenting this region, there would only be one. I was never a fan of the Sinistee gimmick, but I know plenty of people are. Maybe in the actual hypothetical games, there would be two different barrels for the authentic and phony Cronian Sinistee. Much like the Pride Pebble before it, it, the Sacred Parchment is used to evolve Chimeco into Chimonarch while it levels up while holding the item. 
I felt like the scroll aesthetic made sense for a Pokemon based on Macbeth, the play and to some extent the king. Inspired by the lore behind Chimeco being to do with warding off spirits, which directly inspired Chimonarch with its connection to curses and its new normal typing, I wanted to make the sacred parchment itself ward off spirits, by reducing damage dealt by ghost types. So in a way, it's the ghost version of the Draken Helmet, but with a different way of using it to evolve a Pokemon. Time for weather setting items. Yes, you heard me correctly. These items would be consumable, and the weather wouldn't last very long. Coupled with the buffs I gave to Forecast, consider these more an extension of your cast form. For more information, watch my cast form video. Anyways, the fog bomb sets up fog, turning cast form into its very type foggy form. I was inspired by the smoke bomb in Legends Arceus. And then we have the whoopee cushion, named and based on the real world object, due to that being funny, and it causes air to rush out. This sets up the new weather I introduced, that being wind, which transforms cast form into its new windy form. Cronio also has four fossil lines, so therefore four fossils, which when revived, produce the base stage mon of those lines. The two ice type fossils are single stage, and the two rock types are two stage. In particular, the Frozen Claw gets revived into Squirage. The Frozen Horn gets revived into Tunstag. The Plate Fossil gets revived into Arthrotect, which evolves into Agapleura. And the Spearhead Fossil gets revived into Tic Tackle, which evolves into Obsidilic. I did have two other items that were originally intended for evolving some Pokémon. I may not scrap them entirely, but they won't be used for evolution anymore. The first was a new berry called the Nisha Berry which is based on the Nightshade, which is poisonous. This would be a much weaker version of the Toxic Orb, mainly by inflicting poison and being consumable. Eating this berry would have triggered evolution in some Mon, but I scrapped this. Another item which I got Formiga to do once again was the Special Rod. I scrapped this as an evolution method due to its complexity. What it would have been was once it was held by a Pokemon and it gets hit by a special move, the Special Rod would store the type of said move a charge, if you will, as well as make the move deal no damage. The charge would have gone away either by the Pokemon using an attacking move, which would change its type to match the charge, or if the Pokemon evolved using this charge, since the charge would remain after battle unless if it's released. Here are all the type charges for the special rod. It may still be used as a battle item, but it was too complicated for evolution methods, so I felt like scrapping it. And that's all of the items that are part of my Fakemon region, Cronio. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out my Instagram and Discord in the description. If you want to help out with my content and have the means to do so, why not chip in some money by joining my Patreon or becoming a YouTube member? You get to see some content early as well as access exclusive chats on my Discord server. Also, check out the artists I commissioned as well as the rest of the video series. With all that said, have a good one.